Hello and welcome. You're watching the Health Talk session by Yashoda Hospitals. Diabetes is one of the top pressing health issues in the nation. It is chronic and progressive disorder leading to chronic heart disease and also chronic kidney disease. I'm Dr. Lakshmi and joining us today we have with us Dr. Dilip Gude, consultant physician from Yashoda Hospital Somaji Guda who will be discussing about newer treatment approach and treatment modalities for diabetes in our today's episode. Welcome doctor. Hi Dr. Dilip Gude here, physician Yashoda Hospital Somaji Guda. So doctor, a recent survey suggests that there is 150% rise of diabetic cases in India. Why do you think it is so prevalent, especially in our country? So firstly, I think uh, the diagnosis rate is increasing. People are aware that they need to get checked for their uh, possible uh, chances of being a diabetic. And uh, so screening rates have increased. And uh, of course, there has been a, a tremendous rise in sedentary kind of lifestyle where people are uh, you know, overweight or obese. And this is predisposing them for uh, diabetes at a much younger age. So we are seeing uh, only the tip of the iceberg, in fact. There is a huge number of uh, uh, diabetic or pre-diabetic uh, patients or people in, in the society that are slowly being uh, you know, uh, diagnosed right now and that is what is leading to this uh, tremendous, uh, tremendously high numbers of uh, diabetic prevalence. So we all know the consequences and complications what a diabetic patient can have. So coming to the treatment part, what are the newer treatment modalities in the present era? So there have been uh, consensus on uh, what uh, newer uh, or what agents should be used for treating diabetes. So it's no more just looking at fasting post lunch. So it means that your anti-diabetic drug is not just supposed to uh, decrease fasting and post lunch. It is supposed to protect from uh, cardiac related uh, ailments that is prevent heart attacks, uh, prevent heart failure. Uh, in fact, prevent kidney disease progression in a diabetic patient. So these are called pleiotropic benefits. So benefits that are not just uh, lowering fasting and post lunch or bringing them under control, but these drugs are supposed to prevent future heart attacks, future heart failure uh, uh, prevalence, and also prevent future uh, kidney disease as well. So doctor, you mean to say that the medications what we have to take for diabetes today have to be protective both for your heart and kidneys especially and not just take your sugars under control. So what are the newer medications? So we have uh, two or three different classes. In fact, in the last seven, eight years, uh, there has been a tremendous uh, rise in the use of these uh, classes of medicines, rightfully so. Uh, ESGLT2 inhibitors, that is uh, empagliflozin, canagliflozin, dapagliflozin, etc. These are uh, drugs that cause glucosuria, as in when sugars cross, say, 120, 130, the extra sugar starts getting excreted in the urine. So, uh, which is how uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, calories burnt. In fact, patients tend to uh, lose fat and uh, these drugs are known to prevent uh, heart attacks and bring down heart failure by about 40 percent and likewise kidney disease progression has come down tremendously about 30 to 40 percent in fact so these drugs apart from lowering uh, blood sugars or bringing down fasting and post lunch to normal levels they have this tremendous ability to bring down one's fat in fact and uh, uh, make them weight neutral or make them lose weight and then uh, bring down their uh, blood pressure as well as in uh, bring down systolic blood pressure by about 4 to 6 mm and then uh, also uh, various kinds of uh, pleiotropic benefits there are anti-inflammatory benefits also in fact atherosclerotic risk is also uh, brought down by this uh, class now there is another class of uh, anti-diabetic agents like uh, uh, glp1 receptor agonists these are uh, duloglutide, semaglutide, uh, uh, etc. These uh, class of medicines are known to, uh, you know, work uh, by increasing endogenous uh, GLP-1 and also by giving uh, exogenous GLP-1. So these are going to improve incretins in, in the body and then they are going to uh, bring down one's uh, satiety and uh, bring down uh, one's body fat, uh, that is, whole, you know, whole body uh, weight also comes down, their BMI improves to a healthier range and bring down their overweight or obese uh, nature. So these medicines are, uh, you know, uh, revolutionary in uh, bringing down one's uh, need for insulin per day. If you take uh, amount of insulin uh, use uh, or even if not completely stopping, you can bring down insulin use by about 70%. So I just want to know someone who's already a known case of a heart disease or a kidney disease and is diagnosed 
to have diabetes and they are put on this medications. So you think it's more beneficial to them this way? So when people have heart failure and kidney disease already, uh, even then these classes of medicines will retard the progression of kidney disease, uh, will retard the uh, occurrence of uh, any new heart failure or even uh, coronary artery disease. Uh, etc. So, uh, there is tremendous benefit not just of uh, lowering of sugars, uh, but then uh, when you uh, minimize heart disease uh, and kidney disease by tremendously by 40 percent, I think these are the classes uh, that we need definitely need to uh, recommend. I think you get a good point saying that the usage of insulin has drastically come down. So, I think that's a big step in the line of diabetes because most of us think that if one is diabetic, they have to end up only with insulin at some point or the other. What do you have to say about this, doctor? And then when you combine these uh, other two uh, beneficial classes, like GLP-1 respragmus and azurotimeters and metformin, the amount of insulin per day has come down drastically by almost 70 percent and in fact in some patients we could actually stop insulin use uh, because they, they were not just requiring insulin use uh, at all. So when you have good control of uh, fasting and post lunch without insulin use, you are actually promoting weight loss and then you are making sure there is no uh, insulin resistance and you are improving insulin sensitivity in these patients, thereby giving good quality of life, longevity, protecting their heart and kidney also apart from having very good glycemic control. So talking about newer approach modalities in the line of diabetes, the use of sulf sulfonyl urea drugs have been on the tremendous rise, especially in the last couple of years. So do you think it's really safe? So I don't recommend sulfonyl ureas. In fact, uh, uh, drugs like glimepiride, uh, glibenclamide, gliburide, glipizide, glicloside, all these belong to a class called sulfonyl ureas. Now they tend to push the pancreas or then they tend to pu put a lot of pressure on pancreatic beta cells so much that beta cells start dying. So there is a condition called beta cell exhaustion that occurs over a period of time where beta cells start dying at a, a more rapid rate than usual. But unfortunately in India probably 70 to 80 percent of uh, diabetes treatment market is all occupied by uh, you know sulfonylureas and uh, that needs to change. Uh, although uh, sulfonylureas uh, tend to be cheaper. Uh, we strongly recommend their use only as a la last resort and then uh, promote the use of uh, you know gliptins, uh, uh, glutide or uh, you know the glutides or the gliflozins. You know these are the medicines to be promoted or recommended because apart from sugar lowering they have fantastic pleiotropic benefits also. So doctor when treating a patient for diabetes apart from monitoring sugars regularly what are the other parameters that you keep a check on? Retinopathy risk is multiplied when, when a, a diabetic patient with poor control of sugars has uncontrolled BP, the retinopathy is accelerated, I mean 10 times faster and more uh, aggressive and severe. So blood pressure control should be very strict in a diabetic patient. Uh, in fact, stroke risk comes down, that is, uh, you know, paralysis attack risk comes down drastically if you can uh, maintain a very good blood pressure in a diabetic patient. Likewise, heart attack risk also comes down, nephropathy risk comes down drastically. In fact, uh, apart from retinopathy, even uh, there are uh, studies that proved that other all complications of uh, diabetes. Uh, either micro or macrovascular complications come down drastically if you can maintain normal tension uh, nature in a diabetic patient that is maintained strictly uh, 120 and 80 systolic and uh, diastolic in a, a diabetic patient. So thank you doctor, it was wonderful having you here on the program today. Thank you. So this brings us to the end of this episode. Hope this episode was informative as far as diabetes and its newer treatment modalities is concerned and don't forget to join us for the next week as well. Until then, stay healthy and take care. Thank you.